Hi again, it's Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. You know the more common objects you'll put on your website when you're doing web design are things like text and images and certainly navigation. Most websites will have some kind of navigation or menu system so that the end user will be able to get around your website from page to page or even link to external websites depending on how you've designed your website. So navigation is an important part of the design process and 90 Second Website Builder gives you a number of navigation tools and menu systems to work with. The one I'm going to talk about or focus on in this video is called the Layer Menu. And of course, it's in the toolbox under the Navigation category. So I'm just going to click on Layer Menu and draw one out here. Now if you're familiar with what a layer is, then you'll understand this better. If you're not, you should watch the video about layers. And you should know what a menu or navigation system is. But if you combine layers and menus, you end up with a very powerful tool like this, the layer menu. What this means is each item in your navigation system actually can have its own layer. And again, if you're familiar with layers, you can see how this is going to be very powerful. And that means under each one of these menu items, I have a layer that I can put any kind of content I want to, not just text or links. But inside a layer, I can put images, font awesome icons, videos, forms, and certainly text and links. But just about anything that you can put on your page can actually go into a layer, which now means you can create navigation and menus that are very, very robust and very visual. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, you can see as I was clicking on here, each one of these menu items has its own layer. And you can also tell by the way it's selected that I can change the size of these layers accordingly. So if I want to make the layer that comes up for menu item number one bigger, you can see that I can do that. Let me click F5 so we can take a look at what this looks like in a live browser. As I'm hovering over these items, you can see that they're respective layers come up. See, I made a bigger one for menu item one. And so that's what will show. Of course, right now they're empty, but I'm just demonstrating how they behave. Now let me show you how you can adjust how this looks. Obviously, to fill the content, it's easy. You would start dragging in objects and things that you want into the content area. So for example, if we wanted some text right here, we would put text right here inside this layer. If we wanted uh, an image, we could do that. So let's put, actually, let's put an icon in here. We're going to go up and use a font awesome icon. If I go up to the insert menu and grab the font awesome icon, let's just grab one right here randomly and put it on our layer. So you can see that we can put just about anything in a layer. So now let me show you how to control and design how the layer behaves. This is an entire object in and of itself, even though this particular menu has four items and therefore four separate layers, it is in and of itself a single item. And so no matter where we click on here, if we're going to double click, it's going to bring up this layer menu settings. So this applies to the entire menu system and all of its layers. Obviously, we would adjust what we put in our menu here. We can double click on this or you can click edit. Let me put a longer word in there so I can show you what that looks like. So we can have our menu item here and then if it's going to go to a particular page or if it's going to go to another website, you probably understand linking by now. So anyway, this is what that's going to look like right there. As we move down the uh, layer menu settings here, you can see that the layout can be controlled for this, meaning the button size can be variable. In other words, it will vary depending on the size of the phrasing that's in that item. Right now, I've got it set to variable, so that means that these are all going to be different sizes because the first one's bigger. So if I click OK, you can see that right off the bat. This is now a much larger menu item just because the button is varying based on the size of the text, and these have all stayed the same. Let's preview that so we can see what it looks like now. You can see when we hover over, we bring up this particular layer and these are working just fine. The other thing you can control is how those layers appear. Let's double click, bring up the layer menu settings. Aside from controlling how the button looks, which is what this is, meaning the spacing and whether it's variable or fixed. Fixed means it's gonna, they're all going to be the same width and height and you would set that with these numbers here. I like variables, so I'm going to leave that. And of course, the padding is obvious, the space around them. But then down below that, you can control how the layers animate. We've been using fade, so when I was hovering over those menu items, the layers were fading into place. I could also make them slide, or I could make them do nothing. Let's look at slide, because it's kind of cool. So I'll click OK. We're going to click F5 to preview this in a browser. 
And now when we hover over them, you can see they slide down. Slightly different than fading. Just a design decision for you to make. I'm going to set mine back to a fade. I like that. And then this is how they uh, align to the button. Now in most cases you are going to want to leave them set to left because that's normal and that's what people are going to be accustomed to. And sometimes part of design is helping people feel comfortable on your website. So you want to use uh, interfaces that make them feel familiar. So this is going to be, this is why this defaults to left because this is going to be more familiar. But you do have some options here. You don't have to do that. For example, you could make the layers align to the right. And I'll show you what that means. We'll click OK. We'll click F5, and you'll see that the edge of the layers will now be on the right edge of the menu item. You can see how that looks a little bit different, but that may be awkward for some people because most of the time it's the other way around. And again, like I said, it defaults to left. But you can also do this thing called full width, which is kind of an ice trick and may be appropriate for you. If you click OK, go F5. Now you'll see that the layers don't do left or right. They actually fill the screen. This is the full width layer menu item. So you can imagine just this one trick alone, the kind of cool things you can do for your top menu items, the amount of content you could show by using this one trick. So that's actually really, really good. Now I'm going to set my back to where it was. Uh, I like left and I like fade. The other thing I can do is I can control how the mouse interacts with this layer. So in other words, we've been hovering over these items so that the layer shows. I can change that to where the user has to actually click. If we preview that, you can see that hovering over doesn't do anything. I have to actually click, click, and I'm actually clicking my mouse to make those appear. Again, just a lot of choices for you as a designer to control how this looks and how it behaves. Under button style, this is obvious. It's going to be the buttons can have a solid background. They can have gradient backgrounds or be transparent. They'll have a background color as well as a hover color. You saw that as I was hovering over it turned to blue. You can change that color here. The buttons can have a border. Right now they have a very uh, light gray one pixel border, but you can eliminate that or make it fat or make the borders rounded with the radius setting. Also. Even the border can be solid or dotted or dashed, just like you would with any border. And then the text can be any font that's in the system, the alignment of the text, the size of it, and even the text has its own color and, and a hover color. These are the default settings. You don't have to use them. Obviously, you can change all that. And now, since we are working with layers, and this is where this gets very interesting, since this particular menu has four items, and you're not limited to four, but since it has four items, we're working with four different layers. And we can determine what these layers in and of themselves are going to look like. Aside from the content that's on top of them or in them, each layer can actually have its own background. Now, it defaults to a solid white, but you can change that to a solid color of another kind or even make it transparent, gradient. Or here's where it really gets interesting. That background can be an image just like you would with a regular layer. So you would pick the image you want to use for your background. And believe it or not, you can even use the parallax effect because this is an actual full functioning layer. So that's what makes this tool so powerful. And of course, you can put a shadow behind that layer box that comes up if you want to. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. This is something that you can obviously play with and do so many things with and take advantage of because now that you can make a navigation system or a menu that presents this many options, it just makes your website look that much better and makes it much easier for your users to get around and get the content you want them to as you're building your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.